Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. To buy or to rent, whether we're talking a home, a car, or a furniture, I mean, anyone who's driven by one of those no credit, no problem banners has probably thought about this. And if you're a fan of having maximum control over your home's computer network, you might be considering buying a modem instead of renting one from your ISP. But is it actually a good idea? And why do ISPs even rent modems in the first place? I mean, they don't rent iPads and computers, so what gives? Well, there are a few rationales behind those rental fees that you pay every month. One is that since the modem connects directly to your provider's network, the boxes that your ISP provides are validated for compatibility with that specific ISP signal. For the ISP, this is not just about you, but also about lowering the risk of your random equipment causing security issues or other problems that could muck up the network for other users. Fiber to the home providers, for example, keep things particularly locked down and ADSL is becoming less common. So our focus today is really gonna be on cable modems. Of course, the sweet, sweet paper that those rental fees bring in every month from millions of customers doesn't hurt, especially from customers who don't consider themselves tech savvy enough to buy and install their own modem or even realize that it's an option. So the biggest reason you might wanna consider buying your own modem is to save money. Although buying it up front generally requires, of course, <laughs> a bigger upfront investment than your monthly rental cost, anywhere from about 30 to over 150 US dollars, it will inevitably pay for itself over time, especially if you're not sharing your modem rental with your roommates. But more money in your pocket isn't even the only perk. Oftentimes, aftermarket modems can be of higher quality than what your ISP would provide, especially if your ISP has given you one of those modem, wireless router, switch combo units, which sometimes come with underperforming Wi-Fi. Buying a modem yourself means that you can pick something with more channels. And simply put, the more channels a modem supports, the more data it can carry per second. So if you think that you might wanna upgrade your internet speed down the road, you wanna find a modem with a high number of channels. Current gen modems can get about 42 and a half megabits per second per channel. So find a 24 channel model if you're looking at a gigabit connection down the line. Once you've done that, you can hook up a separate wireless router that's more powerful than whatever's built into that rental combo unit, which can dramatically improve performance if you're trying to get coverage for a larger house or if you've got a ton of devices on your wireless network. Now, if you're a tinkerer, an aftermarket modem can allow you to keep an eye on and prioritize your network traffic much more effectively than the options that your ISP might give you. Just remember that before you buy, you'll wanna make sure that the modem that you fancy is compatible with your ISP's network and that it can also deliver the speed that you're paying for. Most major ISPs do allow you to buy your own modem and they keep a list of tested, approved models on their website. Now, if you buy something outside that list, it might still work, but there are no guarantees. And some ISPs might even see that you're using an unapproved device and refuse to provide service. Also pay attention to the DOCSIS version of the modem that you want. This is the specification that indicates, among other things, the modem's maximum speed. Most modems these days are DOCSIS 3.0, which can deliver speeds of over one gigabit per second. But make sure you aren't buying a DOCSIS 2.0 modem because you saw it in a bargain bin somewhere for five bucks. Those can only get up to 40 megabit, a pretty slow speed limit by today's standards, with some ISPs not even supporting them anymore. Now you might be tempted to future-proof with a shiny new DOCSIS 3.1 modem, this standard should allow for speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second in each direction, but we don't know how long it will be before the cable companies can actually pull off a connection that fast. I mean, we might have to wait until the next inevitable rebrand. Speaking of inevitable, if you like internet security, you will inevitably find yourself getting PIA. Not only does PIA work on up to five devices at once by hiding your true IP address and allowing you to bypass geo restrictions and censorship by making you appear as though you're connecting from somewhere else, it also blocks unwanted connections to help prevent attacks, auto blocks all traffic if the VPN disconnects, keeps your data out of the hands of advertisers and other snoops, and even includes MACE, PIA's built-in malware blocker. 
PIA supports multiple VPN protocols and encryption levels. They have apps for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, Linux, and a Chrome extension. And they have over 3,000 servers in 28 countries, and they don't log user activity. So what are you waiting for? Check out PIA VPN at the link below. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, check out our other videos. Don't forget to leave a comment with video suggestions. And also don't forget to subscribe and follow. And don't forget to subscribe and follow. And don't forget to subscribe and follow. And don't forget to, I don't know, repetition is supposed to work. I, I, I figured that's why they always say, you know, um, leave your number after the beep.